Hello and welcome everyone. How are you all? All good? Okay. Just give me a thumbs up on the sound check, audio check, video check. And screen check. All good? Okay, let's start everyone for our last few topics of your chapter number one. So here we are going to discuss about the rect rectification entries which we covered in the last session and the last session I give you all the brief about what needs to be rectified and how it needs to be rectified and when it needs to be rectified. So we learned about how majorly and when and obviously what needs to be rectified. So these are the three major thing which we covered. I have also told that I am going to do one more question with you all. That is illustration number 34 in your book. So we will have a knowledge about impact on the net profit of last year. OK, so we are going to cover this and then we will move ahead with the remaining topics. Let's do it. In the books of accounts of a company limited for the year ended 31st of March 2019. So our books is closing on 31st of March 2019. Then it was closed with a difference in the books carried forward. So there was a difference. The following errors were detected subsequently. So they have detected some of the errors later on after closing the books of accounts. So there were three situations. First, the error has been detected before trial balance. Second, after trial balance, but before closing the books and third after closing the books. So this is the third situation we are talking about. After closing your final accounts, we have detected some of the errors. Now, what can we do out of these? Let's see. First, Return outward book was undercast by rupees 100. So what do you mean by return outward? What is return outward? I will give you two terminologies. You have to tell. What is? Return. Outward and what is? Return inward before doing the adjustments we need to first know what do you mean by these two terminologies come on what is return outward everyone what is return outward so basically when we purchase the goods what happens from outside from outside that may be our suppliers factory from out to outside the goods come but when i return this goods so this is called return outwards because it came from outside and then it was returned so what do you mean by purchase return i would say that is return outward purchase return this is called the purchases return okay that was the simple concept this is a trick to learn if the goods are coming from outside so it would be return outward and it would be a purchase return when i sell goods so goods go from inside to my customer but when the customer will return me the goods so this will be called return inward because the goods are coming back inside it will be called return inward so this will be called sales return i hope this trick will help you to learn that what are the things over there so you know about the return outward and the return inward so what is given in the question return outward that is purchase return book was undercast by rupees 100. 
that is it is lower by rupees 100 so what we will do normally if you want to increase the purchase return if you want to increase the purchase return so i will credit the purchase return account by rupees 100 and debit the suspense account so that is what i normally do but here what happened is we have closed our books so instead of purchase return what i will use i will use the p and l adjustment account p and l adjustment account so that is going to my, be my first rectification entry in this case so just have a look first entry suspense account debit with rupees 100 to pnl adjustment rupees 100 that is how you need to think and then do the rectification entry okay second part rupees 1500 being the total of discount column on the credit side of the cash book was not posted what does that mean 1500 was the amount of total of the discount column on the credit side of the cash book so how does cash book looks like what is the ledger so we have our debits we have our credits so in my cash book also there are some columns we have various column cash book that is triple column double column cash book so they are talking about one of the column where we have one is cash and other is discount then we have again cash and then we have the discount so one of the total on the credit side i had a total of credit side of 1500 it is 1500 being the total discount on the credit side was not posted that means there was some credit of discount given but this has not been posted in our books of account so i will post it now okay this needs to be posted right now this will increase my income so what will be the journal entry again the same thing that is suspense account debited with 1500 to pnl adjustment account 1500 that is your second effect now try to do the rest four by yourself c d e and f everyone try then i will explain you and if there are any confusion then we will do it you have four minutes one minute for each one try to do it fast
done everyone so there was one doubt which i received that uh, how come this needs to be credited in the second one so basically on the debit side whenever there is a discount given that needs to be mentioned that is your expense on the credit side there is discount received that is your income so whenever you have your income increase it will be credited as per your rules of accounts okay so just remember those rules you will be through all the general entries it is very easy not a rocket science but just a place where you can focus on your concepts and apply those at the right time so that you have the right answer all the time moving on to the third part 6000 being cost of purchase of office furniture was debited to what purchase account it has been debited to the purchase account so if it is debited to purchase account my purchases are higher by 6000 which should not be done okay so i have to lower my purchase and for lowering my purchase i need to credit the purchase account so the credit needs to be done to whom to the purchase account but my books are closed so what i will do i will again use two pnl adjustment account for <coughs> 6000 rupees but what i need to debit should i debit the suspense the answer is no here i know that this is the furniture which i am talking about so i can directly debit the furniture because the furniture was purchased so debit what comes in so furniture account debit 6000 to pnl adjustment that was your next general entry office furniture to pnl adjustment 6000 rupees then we have next entry the entry number e sales account was under casted no no d entry let d1 a credit sale of 760 was wrongly posted 670 to the customer accounts in the sales ledger so in the customer account the entry was done incorrect but in the sales account the entry has been done correct so for example i have sold goods to mr a i sold goods worth rupees 760 but in his books of accounts i wrote it as 670 so 90 rupees is short in my debtor 90 rupees is short in my debtors so i have to increase by <coughs> debtor by 90 rupees so what entry i will do i will debit the debtors account by rupees 90 and i will transfer that to suspense account rupees 90 sir why you have not used the pnl adjustment account because data is not a pnl item it is not a pnl item it is a balance sheet item okay so for the balance sheet items you need to take care of these journal entries then going to the next part the sales account was under casted by 10000 being the carry over mistake in the sales day book so sales is under casted by 10000 so to correct this you have to increase the sales how to increase the sale by crediting the sales account so i do i need to do the credit but my books are closed so what i will use again my pnl adjustment account will be used over here so here it would be suspense account debit to pnl adjustment 10000 and 10000 okay that was your part number e and going to the last part closing stock was overcasted by 10000 being casting error in the schedule of inventory so in the inventory schedule your closing stock was overcasted by 10000 so what does that mean you have to lower the closing stock by 10000 so your closing stock account would be credited and your pnl adjustment account would be debited but sir here they have used the opening stock so beta the closing stock of the last year will become the 
opening stock of the current year. Okay, so that is the adjustment which we have done. It will ultimately go to the stock account. So whatever you use, that is fine. So these are the all adjustments, six adjustments which we did. Now, if I prepare a suspense account ledger, just doing the posting of the suspense account. So here I have for in the first entry, I have a debit suspense 100. Then we have 1500 suspense debit again. So 100 has came, 1500 has came. Then we have credit suspense 90, then debit suspense 10,000, so 10,000 here. 90 over here. That is the all. Which I have done till now. OK. Now I have to find out. The next part of it. The next part of it means what? What is the effect on profit? What is the effect on profit? So wherever you have used. PNL adjustment account. Your entry will come in the effect of profit like for example let's talk about the first general entry where i debited the suspense account and the pnl adjustment account was credited so whenever the pnl adjustment account is credited your profit will increase so from the first entry sorry the pnl uh, the profit will decrease so the uh, entry would be suspense account debit to pnl adjustment and it will result into decrease of profit by rupees 100 that is your first now if you go to the second one the pnl account is again credited with 1500 so this will decrease the profit by 1500 then the third credit pnl adjustment by 6000 so decrease the profit by 6000 on the fourth journal entry there is no pnl adjustment so there will be no effect on the profit then we have PNL adjustment account in credit. So this will decrease the profit by 10,000. And then we have PNL adjustment account debit with 10,000. So this will increase the profit by 10,000. So these are all the journal entries as a result of your transaction A, B, C, D, E, and F. The D1 does not had any effect on PNL, so that is why it is giving no effect. Rest all has the effect on the profit. So if you total out these all, the total on the increase side is 10,000. On the decrease side, it is 17,600. So my overall profit will be decreased by 7,600 as a result of these errors. That is the balancing figure which I have received. OK. So that is the balancing figure which I need to show to the examiner. And here if you see the suspense account. So on the. Left hand side here, the total is 21,600 and here the total is 10,000. So whatever is the balancing figure. It has been posted in your file balance over here. Sorry, sorry, there is a mistake in your book. What entries we have already posted? We have posted PNL adjustment account here. These three entries has been done on the debit side and this entry has been done on the credit side. One entry is missing over here. So from A, 100 has come, 1500 has come. 100 is here, 1500 is here. From third, there is no effect on your suspense account. On fourth, there is credit of 90, so credit 90. On fifth, the suspense account is debited by 10,000, so this is also here. So they have given a incorrect totaling here. If you total this side, the debit side, it is. 11,600 right now and on your credit side it is just 90. So whatever the difference is that is double one five one zero. That would be your balancing figure and that would be your difference in the trial balance, not the 
21150. This is incorrectly written over here. You can just cross it out from your books. OK, so that is how we can do the trial balance uh, differences. We can calculate the trial balance differences. We can calculate it, the effect on profit and we can do the rectification entries. Now obviously this whole thing won't be a 10 mark question to you, but it will come in just one mark. So every aspect is important of this question. Not just these, but the other questions as well. OK, so do your part, do your practice, and then we can discuss about your queries with respect to this. So for the rectification, these all were done. If you want some simple examples, just look at the illustration number 35 where they have given the trial balance of a concern has agreed, but the following mistakes were discovered after preparation of the final accounts. So first example, no adjustment entry was passed for an amount of 2000 relating to the outstanding rent. So if entry is not passed, the expense is not booked. Expense is not booked. That means what? Profit will be overcasted by 2000. So that will be the effect on your PNL. Now what will be the effect on balance sheet? The profit will be transferred to the capital account. So capital also overstayed by 2000. And the outstanding liability will be understated by 2000. What is the outstanding, li outstanding liability? That is outstanding rent. So that is the effect on PNL and effect on the balance sheet. So we have so several examples over here which can be asked in the one mark question that you need to solve. OK, these are the easiest easy ones. So that's it. The major topics from your chapter number one, although there are still some small, small topics which we are going through now. OK. Let me get back to the start of the chapter and let's see what we have missed out. So the process of accounting, we have started with the general definitions. What is the financial accounting? What is your cost accounting and what is the management accounting? We did the difference between the bookkeeping and accountancy. We did the difference between management accounting and financial accounting. Then what is the accounting cycle? So accounting cycle begins with the recording of a transaction. Then we prepare the journal entries. We post the ledger account. We prepare the trial balance. We do some adjustment entries that is called your rectification entries as well. OK, or the accrual entries as well. Those are the adjustment entries. Then we prepare an adjusted trial balance. We do the closing entries that transferring of balance, the balance carried down, the balance being carried forward to the trading and PL account, etc. And then we prepare the final balance sheet and PL, which are called the financial statements. So this is the whole first phases of your accounting cycle. Now you are quite go through this. Now, who are the stakeholders who will need this? financial statements. So owners, investors and existing and potential investor, they will require the statements for checking the profit and losses. The lenders will require the statements to check whether the company will be able to pay me back whatever I am lending them and along with the interest. So monitor the solvency of the businesses. Capital and customer for the stability and growth. Government for the taxes and the legal requirements, employees for growth and profitability, because any employee who's working in the organization, he needs to know whether I am able to grow in this organization or not. If I am not able to grow, I will not join that company. That company is not good for me. Is there any doubt? Today there is a lot of silence. There can be two things that you are not understanding at all or you are understanding everything. So just clear me which one of the assumption is right. Are you getting everything or you are not getting anything at all? Come on everyone. OK, moving ahead. 
So we got the users of the financial information. We know what is the financial position that the balance sheet tells you. We know about the financial performance that your PL tells you. Then we have cash flows, which tells you what cash is coming in, what cash is going out. Okay, that is the cash flow statement. Then we have some accounting information relating to cost of product, that is your expenses and everything. Then we discussed about the qualitative characteristics of accounting information that our account should be reliable. That means the accounts are correctly prepared. There is a faithful representation of accounts. We have applied the substance over form. What do you mean by substance over form? Substance over form. What do you mean by that? That means the substance of the transaction should be given more priority rather than just the form. OK, the substance of the transaction should be given more priority rather than just the form itself. For example. Mr X is the owner. Mr X. Sold. Goods worth rupees. 1000. To his own brother. Mr Y. Mr Y. Purchased the goods from his brother, Mr X, and wh what was the amount of the goods? Rupees 1000. So in the books of Mr X, in the books of Mr X, if I say, is this a sale transaction? Is this a sale transaction? If Mr Y was going to pay Mr X, then yes. If Mr Y is going to pay rupees 1000 to Mr X. So the answer is yes, it is a sale transaction. I will record it as Mr Y account debited with 1000 rupees. To. Sales account. So that is the income to my business. But if I tell you that Mr X and Mr Y are the real brothers and obviously Mr X has given 1000 rupees goods to Mr Y, but Mr Y will never ever return the 1000 rupees. Does anyone pay to your brother? Answer is no, we don't pay to our brothers. I have taken the goods, but I will not pay. And obviously Mr X is also aware of it. Mr X also knows that obviously the Mr Y is not going to pay me 1000 rupees. So from the perspective of the business. Is it actually a sale? The answer is no, this is not a sale. The Mr X has given free goods. Of rupees 1000. To Mr Y. So what shall be the accounting entry? So if Mr X has given that goods, so business will take the money from Mr X. This is a drawings. So I will debit my drawings account by 1000. And I will credit my. Purchase account. Because the goods will go down. I have given the goods on the free basis, so my drawings will be debited and my purchase account would be credited. So this is the. Substance. And this was the form, so always and always give such a presentation to the reader of the financial statement so that they can understand the situation clearly. The profit should be correct and the loss should be correct. In the first case, it is 
implicating that the business has made a sale of 1000 but this 1000 will never return to the business so that is why we will say the goods of 1000 rupees has gone out but it will never return so i have debited the drawings account because we will recover it from the owner okay so that is called substance over form always give the priority to the substance of the transaction rather than just the form itself <clears throat> but if as i said if mr x was going to pay back mr x so the form is correct and this is only the substance also this is also the substance of the transaction this is the substance this is the form so this is the correct entry but if this is the substance so this entry needs to be done. That is the concept of substance over form. OK, moving on. The financial statement should be neutral between the profit and losses and everything. OK, that is a neutral presentation which should be given. Now what is prudence? Prudence is a school of thought, I would say. What is a prudence? It is a school of thought. For example, A enterprise sold goods rupees one zero zero two. 1002 rupees goods a enterprise sold to mr ram so if i am technically the owner of the business and mr x is going to sorry mr ram is going to pay me in cash if mr ram is going to pay me in cash then what would i do Will I take two rupees also from him? The answer is no. I will take just thousand rupees. Okay. Technically, I am liable to take thousand and two rupees, but in normal business, nobody takes one or two rupees. That is fine. If I am buying the goods of thousand rupees, he will not ask for additional two rupees. But yeah, if I am paying from the credit card or the debit card, so obviously in the machine he can write the full amount of one zero zero two. Okay. But for one or two rupees, nobody argues. So A enterprise has sold the goods of 1002 to Mr. Ram. Mr. Ram said that I will pay after one month. And Mr. A, sorry, A enterprise know that the payment will come. Not 1002 rupees, but the 1000 rupees only. Or Mr. Ram will pay not the 1000. He will take 10% discount extra after one month. And in actual, he's just going to pay me rupees 900. But how much my sales is recorded at? My sales is recorded at 1002. So 1002 is the data. What is the difference between 900 and 1002? It is 102 rupees. So for 102 rupees, is this money going to come to me? The answer is no. So what is this actually? This is your bad dates. This money will not be refunded. If I have given discount, so this should be the discount allowed. But right now I have not allowed any discount to them. What I have actually done? I have sold the goods of 1002 rupees and from the nature of Mr. Ram, I know he will come back after one month. And he will take 10% discount. He will take the 10% discount from me. OK, and because he is a good customer, he every time buys from me. So I will offer him the 10% discount. I will. I can't say no to him. So I know that this 102 rupees loss will be there in future so what our accounting concept says there is one accounting concept called conservatism
what does conservatism says it says that record all expected losses but do not record all expected gains because obviously obviously the gains are coming so that is good for the business but if you have losses in the business you have to record that as soon as possible asap as soon as possible you have to book so if i know that i am going to give the discount of 102 to mr ram so what i need to do i need to create a provision for that loss what i need to create i need to create a provision for that loss that is provision for bad dates i will create a provision and i will book my loss of rupees 102 today only not after one month why not after one month because i can ex estimate that this loss is quite certain this will happen i am not going to change it so i will create the provision of 102 that is how prudence says that you need to be prudent in all your decisions while preparing your financial statements so let's read it out financial statement have to contend with uncertainties that inevitably surround many events as circumstances such uncertainties are recognized by nature of their ex, uh, nature and extent and by exercise prudence in the financial statements prudence is the inclusion of a degree of caution in the exercise judgment needed in making the estimate required and under the conditions of uncertainty so that asset or income are not overstated like in our case our say our data was at 1002 rupees so it was overstated i deducted the discount and now it is correctly showing as 900 so these are not overstated or understated however exercise of prudence does not allow <clears throat> in creation of hidden reserves or excessive provisions for example if i say this ram is not going to pay me at all he will not pay 1002 rupees in full so let's make the provision of full 1002 rupees no that is incorrect i am not going to leave mr ram if he is he is not going to pay me okay so that is an incorrect assumption you can assume but reasonably not just blindly you cannot create excessive provisions or hidden reserves like that so deliberate understatement of assets or income this will cause what this will cause your question on the reliability or the faithful presentation of your accounts if that is the case moving on your account should be complete obviously okay for the financial year everything should be completed if there is any omission then rectification needs to be done so my financial statement should be reliable relevant and follow the materiality concept what do you mean by materiality that everything which is important for users of such financial statement that they should know so it should be taken it into the accounts it should be taken into the accounts okay <clears throat> that is the concept of materiality then we have the concept, uh, concept of understandability your financial statement should be understandable comparable that we can say in the last year my profit was 10% now it has been increased to 15% so there is easy comparability between the two financials okay so that is all about your qualitative characteristics of your accounting information it should be reliable relevant material understandable and comparable then we learned about the basic accounting terms transactions goods services profit assets liabilities you are very good aware of it now let us jump directly to to the gaps we have covered accounting concepts and conventions 
we have learned about the accounts uh, our basic accounting assumptions but we are yet to cover the basic accounting principles obviously you have heard about these principles a lot of number of times but now we are going to discuss one by one each of them and then we are going to discuss the modifying principles where i have already talked about the conservatism concept okay let us go directly to our basic principles so first is revenue realization concept it says that whenever any amount of sale has happened so you have to recognize the same in the period in which sale took place what does this mean for example my accounting period it starts with 1st of april 2022 and it will end on 31st of march 2023 now what i will do if i have sold goods on 30th march 2023 just one day before just one day before your year end of rupees 4 lakhs which will be <coughs> sorry realized realized means it will be paid in uh after 3 months so in which year revenue should be recognized come on everyone try this in which year the revenue should be recognized in the year which the sale is made 22 23 or the next year 23 24 come on everyone whoever is sitting and listening i need your comments I need the answers fast. Come on. so the answer would be 202223 because actual sale has been taken place on 30th of march 2023 which falls into this period although the money will be received later on there is no question that the money will not be received it will be received but after 3 months so this is nothing but your data this is nothing but your datas but if i say the goods are sold on 30th of march and are returnable 
within two months. Returnable within two months. If it is not returned uh, within two months, then the goods will be considered as sold because from my prior experience, 100% of the goods are returned, which is not practical, but but a hypothetical situation which I am giving you. So if the goods are retainable after two months, then I will book the sale after two months, which will be in the year 2023-24 because of the returnable period and my experience, which is saying that 100% of the goods are returned within the two months itself. But if it is not returned, then I can book the sale. That is the correct presentation which I can do. So that is what our rec revenue recognition, sorry, revenue realization concept says. Okay. See, we have one example here. Consider that a store sells goods for rupees 25 lakh during the month on credit. The experience and past data show that generally 2% of the amount is not settled that they will not pay. The revenue to be recognized will be only 24.5 lakhs because the rest would be the bad debts. Although the conceptually the revenue recognized at this value the doubtful amount of 50,000 being 22% of 25 lakh is often cons considered as an expense. We can make a provision for it, right? So that's what we can do from our end. Moving on to the matching concept. What does the matching concept say is that current year profit should be equated against the current year losses. So if I have made a sale. So obviously to make that sale, all the purchases should be in the current year itself. Then only I will get the correct profit. If it is not happening, the profit would be incorrect. So that is what matching concept says. So if I have one expense, if I, I have one expense that does not belong to the current year, so it should not be considered in the PNL in the current year. It will be considered in the year in which it accrues. So it, if it is for the next year, so the next year it will be considered. OK, that is about your matching concept. Then full disclosure concept that whatever data whatever assumptions you are using that should be clarified summarized aggregated and explained for the purpose of presenting the financial statement so that the users can make a meaningful interpretation out of the information so that is the full disclosure you have to disclose every information every principle which you are using okay then moving on dual aspect that is with every debit there is a credit nothing needs to be explained you already know so your assets will always be equal to your liabilities plus capital that is also called your accounting equation okay that is something which we have covered already then going to the next concept which is called verifiable objective evidence concept what does this ob objective say is the accounting data must be verif verified that there should be one maker who is preparing the data and there should be one checker who has checked that data. What does that mean? That the documentary evidence of the transactions must be made which are capable of verification by an independent respect. So I can say the checker can be a chartered accountant or a company secretary or a cost and management accountant. The answer is yes, he can check the data when he wants. OK, so he can be the maker. Uh, he can be the checker. Obviously, for big organization, there are some chartered accountants, company secretaries and the CMAs. They also make the data and check by the seniors. So that is also possible. Then moving on the historical cost concept that that means all transactions. Are recorded. Only after. They take place. So that means I am only booking my historical transaction. I cannot book my future transaction. 
for example tomorrow my bank will charge me 50 rupees so can i debit my bank account today the answer is no whenever it will charge you can debit your bank account so that is called the historical cost concepts if i purchased a land it is of 1 lakh rupees in my books okay the land is of 1 lakh rupees in my books after 5 years the value of the land is 20 lakhs can i change that value answer is no in my accounts all the cost comes at the historical cost so in my accounts it will be shown at 1 lakh rupees only that is the historical cost concept okay but obviously if you have bought a machine of 1 lakh rupees so every year the value of machine will down get down due to depreciation so you can charge the depreciation and bring down that value because after a period of time this will be zero the machine will be of no use that is why we are applying the depreciation as per the prudence concept what is prudence we are booking the expected losses so these are all interlinked the answer is yes these all concepts are interlinked okay then balance sheet equation concept you already know that your debit should be equal to credit that means assets should be equal to liabilities plus capital okay then we have some modifying principles what is modifying principles these are your general concepts of materiality what is material what is important that should be considered for example if my balance sheet i have two sides liability side and asset side okay so on the liability side the total is coming to be 1 lakh 2100.5 rupees 0.5 rupees okay 1 lakh 2100 and 0.5 rupees on the asset side it is coming to be 1 lakh 2100 and 0.49 there is a difference how much is the difference it is 0.01 whether it is important to reconcile this difference the answer is no why no because the difference amount is not material it cannot influence the decision of the reader of the financial statement so you need to define what amount is material so if i say there is a for my business i can say the material amount is any amount which is above 2% which is above 2% so for uh, let's say the total loss of the liability side is 1 lakh rupees so 2% would be 2000 rupees so any difference above 2000 that needs to be reconciled the rest all can be considered as a non material differences but ideally every rupee should match ideally every rupee should match okay that is the basis of your account so that is the concept of materiality as well then the concept of consistency that whatever practice you have followed in the previous year that you need to follow in the current year also and then you need to follow in the next year also for example from your experience you can say that i have made a sale of rupees 1 lakh from the experience i always received 98000 rupees only so there is 2000 rupees of bad debt 2000 rupees of bad debt every year so what i will do i will make a provision for bad debt of 2% of the sales of the 2% of the sales that means 2000 rupees okay is it clear everyone any doubt anyone okay moving on then 
the conservatism concept which says that you can delay in recognizing your income once it is reasonably short but immediately 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 recognize the expenses when you are reasonably sure that there is a there would be some possibility of any expense so you need to recognize that easily that is the conservatism okay you know our parents they also work on the concept of conservatism they keep some money as a saving for future that you might need in future so they spend less today they spend less today so that they can save more and they can take care of the future so they are being conservatism they are taking into consideration future expenses that might come due to any reason okay but if i say that tomorrow i am going to win a lottery of 1 crore rupees so can i spend 20 lakh the answer is no this 1 crore has not come yet when it will come to me then only i can consider that this will come tomorrow so i am not going to consider that when it is come then we can consider it into the books of accounts is it clear everyone okay so that was the concept of the conservatism then going to the timeliness concept that every transaction should be booked timely basis as per your uh, accounting period okay normally when the transaction is made it should be recorded in your journal as soon as the transaction takes place that is about the time uh, timeliness and whatever is the industry practice for your set of companies that needs to be followed by your company to enable the comparative analysis of your financial statements okay that is something industry to industry specific so these are all the principles which we were talking about okay now the very very less important topic but yes obviously can be considered for one or two marks question these are the voucher creation the uh, simple journals that we are going to cover and we are going to close this chapter in your next class okay so that's it from today thank you very much everyone bye bye take care if there are any doubts i am waiting for the comments just do let me know Okay Okay thank you all bye